Good evening. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this summer and for all the wonderful things that come with that in this beautiful lakes country. We thank you again for this wonderful city in which to live, and we continue to seek you and, and your provision for all the people of Fergus Falls. We, we pray that you would take care of all the needs of all the citizens here. And, and I pray, especially tonight, for the council as they meet, I pray that you would give them both wisdom and a spirit of unity and peace as, as the proceedings go on tonight. Lord, we, we ultimately entrust ourselves and the city to you and, and trust that you have good plans for us. So thank you for how you lead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's 5.30, July 15, 2019, and I'll call this meeting of the Fergus Falls City Council to order. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Yep. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, the first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of the agenda, and I'll call on City Administrator Andrew Bremseth. Good evening, Andrew. Yeah, good evening, Your Honor members. Thank you. Um, we do have a couple additions this evening, and they're both related to the same item. One would be uh, likely under consent or under ordinances and resolutions, and that it would be a motion directing the city attorney to prepare an ordinance changing um, the road name of Amy Court to Anna Court, and then uh, corresponding to that, um, under ordinances and resolutions, there should be a first reading of ordinance changing that uh, those street names from Amy Court to Anna Court if the council wishes to proceed. There is documentation on your desk this evening for that. All right. And that's the only addition? Yes. With that, is there a motion to approve the uh, amended agenda? I'll make that motion, Your Honor. Thank you, Anthony. I'll second that, Your Honor. Thank you, Jim. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Uh, there are no public hearings or bids to award this evening. There are also no petitions and communications. So we will move to the consent agenda. And there are five items under the consent agenda. There's a copy in your packet. Lynn's also put a copy on the board for us. If there's anyone who would like to discuss any of those items individually, we will remove them. See none, I would entertain a resolution approving the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Brent. I'll second it. Caroline? Roll call, please. Um, Here. Um, yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. 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 That resolution is approved. Under ordinance and resolutions, tonight we have a second reading of Ordinance 88, which is a rezoning of the Kirkbride addition from RA to B3. This has been to the committee and to the council. It's had its first reading. If there's any questions, we'll direct them to our city attorney. Um, and seeing none, I will ask for a roll call, please. Yes. 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 That resolution is approved. Second resolution this evening is uh, providing for the issuance and sale of $3.32 million in general, general obligation bonds series 2019, pledging the security thereof, net revenues, special assessments, and levying and tax in the payment. I'll call on our city finance director, Bill Sonmore, and looks like Doug Green just joined us just in time. How is that for perfect timing? <laughs> kind of had to just I'll start with a little intro, let him um, get his grounding here. Um, that's why I walked out there. I was just looking for him, so to make we sure we're all. You kind of drew that out a little bit. I just read that. Nope, program. you're good. Um, <laughs> Doug, and they do have that um, the bit tab on their desk. I made copies, okay. so, so they all got that ahead. So um, just to remind you, the project we're looking at, this is the Mount Faith Improve. Um, street and infrastructure improvements as well as water reservoir rehab out there so we're doing the water sewer storm and then the street replacement over by the school district we um, needed to bond for a portion of that and that's what um, we're issuing the bonds for um, 
the uses of the funds um, for the the street portion is um, one million twenty nine thousand six hundred and forty eight dollars water portion for that um, reconstruction area nine hundred and thirty four thousand three fifty seven the water reservoir that we're going to look at rehabbing reservoir number two because number one needs to um, be decommissioned for seven hundred thousand and then the stormwater portion for seven hundred and three thousand nine hundred and ten dollars so those are the uses that's why we needed to put a financing package together we aren't bonding for any of the sewer portion we're paying cash for that portion of the project so with that if um, Doug is ready to talk to you a little bit we had the sale for the bonds today so that's what he'll um, tell you how that went and the recommendation um, the resolution is on your desk as well All right. thank you Bill good evening Doug uh, good evening mr. mayor members of the council again Doug Green with Baker Tilly formerly Springstead still not accustomed to saying that yet but uh, as Bill mentioned it is probably not yellow on your uh, it's it's a bid tabulation so this morning I believe at 10 a.m. we took bids on behalf of the city had a very good sale hit the market at a pretty good time as you know interest rates have really fallen over the past um, two months or so um, they came back last week off their lows but I, mean, I guess you can't always hit hit the low uh, and so the winner was uh, Northland Security. Uh, you see that there's three names there. They, they go together in groups um, called syndicates just to, uh, just to share the, um, uh, the risk a little bit if they're not, uh, if the lead underwriter is not able to sell them, um, then, the, then their partners in this transaction, other banks will, will do so. So you, we award the bonds based off of a true interest rate, uh, which is kind of the weighted average present value, I guess is the best way to ex um, explain it. And that came in at uh, 2.235. Uh, that, that interest rate um, also includes the fee that they, um, they charge for uh, buying the bonds and reselling them. So they do have an incentive to keep that fee down in, um, in their bids because it, it, it affects that, um, that interest rate. I believe when a month ago when we authorized the bond sale or when we set the date and time of the sale, we were looking at an interest rate of two point, uh, let's see, uh, it, I believe it was around 2.55 or so. So it's about 30 basis points or 0.3 percent um, lower than what we were estimating um, about a month ago. Like I said, you know, rates rates have come down. Uh, one last thing I'll mention about it. I know there's a lot of numbers on here, um, but you can see how close they were. Uh, they won by, you know, just one hundredth of a um, percent, one one hundred percent or, or one basis point. And the only difference all the way from top to bottom was you know just 12 basis points or just 0.12 percent so that's what we've seen throughout uh, everyone knows where the market is um, so we've had some really tight tight bidding um, over the past few weeks uh, with bill already went through the projects uh, over the next month we will be you know just getting collecting a bunch of signatures um, and I believe in mid-August, the bond proceeds will be uh, transferred to the, to the city. Uh, with each bond issuance, it does require a credit rating. It's not legally obligated to have a credit rating, but the only way to make these bonds really marketable and get the lowest interest rate is to have a credit rating attached with each individual bond issuance. And uh, we did go through the bond issuance again. The city's general obligation credit rating was uh, affirmed reaffirmed at uh, AA3, which is a great credit uh, investment grade credit rating. Again, those of you aren't familiar with it, it starts at AAA, and then you have uh, the AA levels. So anytime you know, you're in that AA level, it's, it's high investment grade, it, and it has the general obligation in the city, they're going to you know, just be very marketable. Uh, looking at the credit opinion, you know, they mentioned the credit strengths, um, as you know, you're, you're the regional center, you're the regional business center uh, with the community college the, and the tech college campus. And you know, it's primarily you're taking care of the things that you can control when it comes to credit rating, stable financial operations, 
and your your reserves and liquidity. You know, look at you know what you budget each year and the fact that you know it comes in very close to budget. Uh, so, and that's not always the case with with all that you were so. Uh, those are the financial strength. The challenges are those things that you you know you really can't uh, really can't control. It's it's in a um, you know in Greater Minnesota, so the uh, the incomes and the wealth levels aren't naturally aren't as high as the um, metro area, and so frankly we're competing against them. Um, and so those are some of the you know challenges when being compared to other cities in terms of credit rating. Uh, but, you know, again, the, the difference in if we were just one notch higher in an upgrade in, in terms of credit rating, it'd only be, you know, anywhere between five and 10 basis points, you know, 0.05 to 0.1% lower credit rating. So, you know, the market movements matter a whole lot more really than, you know, the credit rating does um, for in terms of um, interest rates. So. With that, I'll take any questions that you may have. Thanks, Doug. I just had one. Just looking at the the sheet here, the num the one number jumps out in 2025. Why does it go up? The maturity there and, and the reoffering yield. I don't even know what that means. But okay. It, obviously, something changes there. And right. So you're are, are you looking at? Uh, it goes from 1.35. Uh, that, that has, that's, has to be an error. That's the, the It'd be reoffering 1. yield. 5, It'd be yeah. 1. So 5. in 2025, it's 1.52. Got it. Okay. So what, what, we don't have to get into this bond yeah, math. Yeah. Uh, this coupon and yield, it, it's simply a matter of, you know, if we're charging a hundred bucks for these bonds and we said we needed that, they're going to pay us $103, but for, in exchange for slightly higher interest rates. Sure. And so they're going to, we're going to take that additional money, put it in the project fund and reduce the amount that we need to borrow in exchange for that. You know, we're going to pay these coupons, 5% coupons, you know, through 28 then 3%. If you compared, you know, what we offered at that, um, at that higher amount, at these lower reoffering yields, and compared it to what we're actually borrowing for because they paid us a premium at these higher coupons, it's essentially the same. Sure. Thanks, Doug. Any other but, questions? And it is correct in Exhibit A of your resolution. So okay. it was just on this separate one. So. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any, any other questions for Doug or Bill? If no. not, is there a resolution? Um, someone offer that resolution? I'll offer that comment. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Tom. I'll second Caroline. that. <laughs> <laughs> Any further It should discussion? be somebody that lived on Mount Faith, really. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That resolution is approved. Thanks, Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Item number three is a resolution approving the capital improvement plan. And I will call on our city engineer, Brian Uvaro. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Your Honor and members of the council. Yes, before you is the 2020, 2024, excuse me, capital improvement plan. Uh, this has been circulated and done, went through the process as prior years. Uh, last week, the Planning Commission um, had reviewed this. They made a few comments and everything we can discuss and everything. Uh, but at this time, before you, where's what we're requesting is adoption of the 2020 20, through 2024 capital improvement plan. Thank you, Brian. Are there any questions of the council? Hey. You, you're on it. I, I noted in the planning commission's kind of um, obviously their 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 sort of prior approval of this was they wanted the council to take a look at projects um, you know particularly the aquatic center, the RTC demolition, street repairs, community center, and Lake Alice, and uh, and I don't know how how much of this obviously is 
absolutely set in stone when we approve it. But um, you know, we we had obviously under under parks. You know, there's 2.9 million dollars uh, for kind of parks, but then when you add up, um, you know, the uh, the streets and solid waste, and uh, I think it was the sanitary sewer. You know, it's only 2.2 million, and our streets are in pretty rough sh shape, and so spending kind of 2.9 million on parks and park areas versus spending 2.2 million on streets, sewer, and and uh, water, sidewalks. I think we need to kind of look at that and maybe readdress it. Yeah. Your Honor, if I may, you're, yeah. you're, you're absolutely right, uh, Council Member Hicks. This plan, through its inception and everything and how it's been processed in years prior, it's never been a fully funded program. Yeah. Uh, if you also look at, too, on... Uh, uh, the bottom of each department and everything I consider it's called leveling the resources based on your budgetary needs this list is a combination of more so uh, wants than needs operational uh, aspects from each department are not included in this but that, that has been how the process has this year we among staff this didn't happen I like to say it clear it didn't happen in a, in a silo this was done with the public comment period with staff we for the most, we've put a lot more effort into it, and we basically trimmed out a lot of unnecessary things in this plan that have been on there for years, or we've uh, considered them they were already operational needs, therefore, why are they on here? Uh, so it was a good audit moving forward. We look to even do more, and it would be in everybody's best interest, especially staff, if we had a funded working capital improvement plan, and that's why we're gonna try and, uh, to uh, tighten this up even more. Mm, thank you. Jim, isn't this is more or less a roadmap, my understanding, and, and what you have on top could drop down to number three or four and something else move up. It's, it's, it's a roadmap of what we would like to see done, and it doesn't always get done. And it, it, it I mean, you got to have a roadmap to know where you're going. Sometimes you have to take a detour and move something else up. You're, you're absolutely your honor, um, Councilmember Fish. You're absolutely right. Your years on, on this committee, you've seen how the process is. And yes, until a project, if it is, it's a roadmap, it's a reminder of the wants and needs that we do have throughout the community. Uh, but uh, none, none of these projects, the majority, I don't want to speak to all of them. Um, if a project is to move up in the hierarchy, we'd start initiating the project and identifying the exact funding sources uh, on how would we proceed with these projects. Thank you, Brian. Bill, did you also have a response? Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Um, one, piggybacking on to what you both have said, it's always been a planning document, um, sometimes very much a placeholder on some types of projects. And like Brian said, we want to try even bring that, dial it in more in the future years to come um, so that it becomes more deliberately tied to the budget. And then when we think about the budget, the one thing that's not in here, and We'll give you some peace and you can share with your constituents is this doesn't include the annual dollars that we do for overlays and seal coats so that's not in here that's in addition so anything that happens out of our operating budgets is not in this this is more the capital related things but if we mill an overlay or seal coat that's all operational so that's in addition to what's here so it kind of makes streets yeah. look a little better then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. sure I, yeah, I want to mention too. Sorry, I just to, to Councilmember Fish's point. <coughs> this isn't set in stone, and uh, anything that's on this list will take additional council action to, like Brian mentioned, initiate or move forward with. So by blessing this plan, and I know that was a concern of the Planning Commission. Some of them had um, personal distaste for some of the projects included in here, and. Um, you're not blessing the project, so to speak. You're blessing this document as a tool, and you have the opportunity to say yes or no to uh, these projects in the future or going forward. So um, these things are going to change. They, they change every year. Things become priorities. There's elections that take place. There's shifts in priority. And uh, I think we have to keep that in mind as we're looking at this, but also um, just know you're exactly right. It's, it takes additional action of the council and all these things will be discussed. So you're not blessing or, or necessarily saying that you're giving us the ability to proceed with all these projects if they're in a given year on this plan. Thanks, Andrew. Caroline? So there's talk about priority, but <coughs> under the priority column, there's no 
clear priorities? Is there a way to read what the clear priorities are? Or is that something that is a roadmap that we can kind of figure out? Or why is that column there? You're, you're absolutely right. That's a, that's a product of a component classification of the program. It's called the Planet Software that we've had, and I'm not sure how long it's been implemented. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I, we've actually discussed that too, but it's not a function that we've fully implemented yet along okay. with the working capital program. Okay. We're hoping to make it a better. Okay. Yeah, Your Honor, let me add to that too, if you don't sure. mind. I, I envision that this whole process looks completely different next year, and we've like Brian mentioned, staff, we spent more time on it this year than we have for several years. And we identified as a group that, or as a team, that this needs to change, but we didn't, frankly, have the time to change it, to engage the appropriate stakeholders and do more with this that we want to do. And so next year, it's going to look completely different. And, and frankly, that priority should be filled in and, and, and departments should have to prioritize and come to the council with what they see as the biggest need for the community and, and ask for those dollars. And so, you know, it's not a good answer for tonight because frankly, um, this process isn't great. And I think we would all admit that, but we are committed and resounded to the fact that next year is going to be a new process. And unfortunately, we didn't have time to roll that out this year. But uh, we did spend at least a couple hours as a, as a whole department head group walking through this line by line and, and significantly shrunk this list from, from previous lists. Mm -hmm. We removed projects that have been on there for 15 to 20 years. And so we've given it a better look than we have. But, but uh, my commitment to you all is that next year this will look different and the process is going to work differently and it's going to be a lot more user friendly. And, and frankly, it's going to be budget friendly and it's going to be um, a better document to serve as a roadmap like Councilmember Fish mentioned, but in full transparency, um, this process isn't great. Jim I would offer the resolution that we <coughs> adopt the 20 to 24 <coughs> CIP plan. Is there a second to that resolution? Thank I'll you, Caroline. That. Further discussion? Scott? Um, yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, I'm going to speak against the resolution, and I intend to vote against the vote for it. Um, Basically, this is going to become part of our public record is whether it's a, going to be different next year or not, this becomes a part of the record of what we intend to do this year. And I don't think it very accurately um, reflects the priorities that we've identified. Um, and the things that the Planning Commission identified, I think, were very valid. Uh, the fact that there was no project identified for 2021 for streets at all. Um, the fact that uh, Lake Alice had no funding for four years for any project of any kind when that was one of our top priorities identified in our retreat, our retreat earlier this spring. Um, the, there were other things that they also mentioned that I think were valid concerns. I don't know that it would take a great deal amount of time to at least put those kind of placeholder things in place to reflect those questions and those priorities and come back with another uh, version of this at our next meeting. The question that I guess I would have uh, even though I still intend to vote against this resolution, would be to what degree does it matter whether we pass it or not? It's gonna, is it going to completely bring a halt to the budgeting process or does it blow up everything or does it not matter? What Does it not matter? I mean, if it doesn't matter, then maybe we just ignore it and move on. But at this point, uh, that's how I'd like to comment. Thanks, Scott. Andrew or uh, Brian, did you guys have any? Well, maybe Bill can speak Bill, to the budget yeah, question. Yeah, the budget question, sorry. It, it, of course, won't blow up the budget process because we have to continue with the budget process. And when we've used this document in the past, we'll often sit down and, and we know all the projects we're working on with you that you've initiated, you know, for example, Mount Faith that we're working on and the library when we did that. So we make sure we get those in there. Some of the others, we do put in general categories like streets, this, on a more generic basis. Um, but we do try to list out what different streets are in here under this plan. But because it's in there doesn't mean that they're a go again. But it's not a perfect process, but it's not gonna halt the bus budget process either because we certainly have to get next year's budget put together. Um, I, and I would add, Your Honor, there would be no way to, to, to your original point about not maybe reflecting the council's priorities, there would be no way to put all of the priorities of the city 
or the city council in the 2019 column. I mean, it's just not, in no scenario would this community be able to afford all of the projects. And so as the top priority of the city, which was the downtown riverfront project, you'll see that reflected in 2019 as $2.25 million also in uh, or excuse me, 2020 and also in 2021 being significant projects, which is why the park budget looks fairly inflated over those two years as well. Um, we have to do a little bit of a, of a guesstimate balancing act as to when these things could come together, knowing that the council has dozens of priorities. Um, and I think this does a good job of reflecting some of those conversations that were had with the city council. I, I understand that Lake Alice in particular is not on here. And some of the things that go into consideration with that are related to um, the permits that we need from the DNR that were previously denied, which are gonna continue to take time and, and may or may not be uh, a short-term thing. We look at, or Brian looks at various uh, reconstruction projects in relation to that project as well, and it may not be the prime candidate for a reconstruction of utilities and streets as a standalone project without addressing some of the water quality needs. And so there's not a real exact science and there's no way to truly capture, I think, all nine of your guys' priorities in, in any given order or year. And, and I think we have to keep that in mind as, as we talk about a diversity of stakeholders and a diversity of of priorities amongst the city council and um, all of the projects I believe that the city council has talked about are on here in some way shape or form and, and I think that's a good start um, for example uh, community center was another top three priority of the city council from the retreat and, and we just know that there's no way that could come together in the next couple of years so you'll see it on the on the tail end of this capital improvement plan but certainly reflected to keep it uh, on the radar and, and on the roadmap so to speak so people have some thoughts into that and, and frankly that might come off after some further discussion amongst the council and, and some other groups so um, there's no perfect science here I, I think Brian did a good job of doing what he could to reflect those priorities. I think this list is, is fairly comprehensive. Um, the dairy properties on there, I know there was some debate about the year that would take place. But again, just knowing our financial picture and, and how much money is required to do all of these desired projects, we have to start using some uh, level of, of judgment to start saying when they could realistically happen and the decision lies in the council's hands as to how that ultimately plays out but we had to bring something um, that actually could be close to reality to your consideration so that, that's how I would respond to that but I, I appreciate those comments. Thanks Andrew are there any other <coughs> questions before right. we vote? Because if I could just make one suggestion I guess sure. for example on the water system there's five hundred thousand dollars a year just across the line even something like that through the street department would have taken that concern away to a large degree, I think, for a lot of people. Because you know you're going to do something. Sure. You know, and I think that type of approach would have helped make this a better document. Thanks, Scott. Any other comments, questions before we vote? Did Brian, did you have... I just want to address just a few things, and I'm just looking what you're referring to, Councilman Kwambi, if I may. That's, yeah, for the 500000 are you referring to the water plant rehabilitation? Correct. Yeah, well, that's, those are a significant need that we haven't, and we're working on that, and that's if we worked on our rate study to help work at our rates and everything. That's a significant need that we're looking at in the future, and we earmarked like 500000 uh, We haven't confirmed with the study yet, but we're looking to get that completed, hopefully this fall here. Let's do the assessment. In regards to the street, I would like to say I, I think – uh, that message is uh, quite clear to staff and everything, especially with this council's taken upon. Uh, with the recent projects we've done with College Way, we just recently had uh, the pre-construction meeting, and I do have the minutes, but last Thursday for our Lincoln Avenue Federal Aid Project Mill Overlay. That's a significant project. Um, I'm waiting for the official minutes, but based on what the contractor is looking at, they are looking to actually start the road surfacing sometime in August. Uh, so, yes, we have a lot of litany. i like to also remind in this past year, we completed the annual pavement survey. Uh, that's a project that's been on the boards for quite some time. Uh, we're looking to start doing some more implementation heavy into 2021, along as uh, the potential of looking at fees. So I think a lot of the groundwork's kind of in place to have a m much more robust uh, pavement management prep, uh, system coming out. More improvement. Thank you, Brian. Roll, roll call, please. No. Yes. Thompson. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Yes. Yes. That resolution is approved. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Item number four under ordinance resolutions <coughs> is a resolution authorizing the submission of a Greater Minnesota Regional Parks and Trails uh, Commission fiscal year 2021 20, funding application for the Glacial Edge Trail from Union Avenue to Otter Hill County Historical Society. Andrew, did you want to start the discussion on this? Yes, Your Honor. Members, thank you. Uh, we had a good discussion about this at the Committee of the Whole meeting last week, and you asked for us to bring it forward with some additional information related to some of the projects that have been successfully funded, and, and Ryan Miller has done that research and has an answer for you. But as we were doing that research and as we were doing more work on refining a budget related to this uh, Glacial Edge Trail application, we decided or, or think that it probably makes a lot of sense to schedule a work session specifically related to this Glacial Edge Trail funding application. There are some new rules, so to speak, with the application this year, and I think those rules may have implications that the council wants to consider in what their request may be. So what I'm proposing to the city council is that a week from tonight, Monday the 22nd at 4.30, we host a work session dedicated to this issue. And at that time, um, ask the city council to act in, in the capacity as a city council to give this resolution authorizing the submission of the grant, which I think may or may not change, um, probably will change on what, what the route could be or, or what um, the significance of the request could be based on some of the factors that we've identified over the last couple of days. So um, that would be my suggestion. We could certainly have some discussion this evening, but I, I think it makes sense to have a more global discussion and really take a deep dive on these factors and, and look at budgets um, in, a, in a setting that is uh, more conducive for that and allows us more time to do that. So um, I guess I would defer to the council as to sure. what they wanna do, but uh, I, would, I would recommend that we put a work session together and, and give this the time and attention that it needs. Yeah, the only uh, thought I guess would be to make sure that we have five members that are able to be present next Monday so that we have the ability to pass a resolution, right? That's the only concern. Is I'm, I'm available. I, I'm gonna, be here, but I don't counsel. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, For a lot of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Caroline's checking her. Yep, I think I can make it. Yeah. I'll be there. You'll be there. There's three of us. I'll be there. Jim, yep. four, five. Any other thought? And it's assuming mm -hmm. that we're going to have, uh, looks like we'll have five members present. Are you guys good to have a deeper dive into it next? Yeah. The other thing would be, um, you brought up a good point on the committee of the hall was like, how many points is it out of? How many did we get last time? And so sure. if we could get that information circulated prior, that would be Ryan useful. Ryan did send out some information oh, yeah. today. I don't know if we got oh, to right. it. said something like, I think you said that most successful applications are close to a 25% match. But that's not the exact That's not, the that's, uh, yeah, it was, it's, do you need a, is the maximum points you can get 100 points and we got 65 last time? Or did we get kind of, you know, 85 last time? I think was that was. That was what I was we'll thinking have, of. Yeah, we'll see your honor members, yeah. Councilmember Hicks. We'll send that out in advance of the meeting, and um, we'll have a presentation prepared and, and everything for consideration at the meeting. So we'll, we'll send out some materials ahead of time with an agenda, and uh, then we'll be prepared to take a deep dive on that. Everybody good with that? Wait until next Monday? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. And we will move on to item number five, uh, which is the authorization of the submission of a National Endowment for the Arts grant for the Downtown Riverfront project. And Ryan Miller, Ryan Miller I'm sorry. Ryan, good evening, Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Good evening, members of the council. Um, around this time last year, uh, the, the council made a resolution to um, apply for a National Endowment for the Arts grant. And with that resolution, authorizing the required matching funds for that grant. Um, that was for a fiscal year 2019 grant that would be um, going towards some of the elements in the downtown and riverfront um, projects across the river here. Uh, that initial grant last year was unsuccessful, um, but staff is recommending to apply again this year for fiscal year 2020 uh, for um, the National Endowment for the Arts uh, Foundation grant. Uh, so the um, request to NEA would be for $200,000. That would require a dollar for dollar match by uh, the locality. So that would be a $200,000 match uh, from 
the city or matching partners, if, if matching partners can be identified. Um, last year we discussed where the match match could come from and there are other, other grants we could apply for such as Lake Region for the Arts, our Lake Region Arts Council grants I believe. Um, there's also private fundraising that can be done. There's been a lot of that already for that, that downtown projects. Um, so those all could go towards the match, um, but the resolution would be committing the city to a dollar for dollar match um, of $200,000 for a $400,000 project. And the projects, um, they're the same, it's the same application as last year, and the project would include um, the installation of the interactive water feature in the downtown project plan, as well as some public art installments, um, wayfinding and signage throughout the downtown improvement area, and there's also in there um, some funding for uh, marketing and promotion staffing for the new um, activities that take place in the amphitheater and the farmer's market, whatever um, is all included in our downtown project. Um, so the recommendation is to adapt a resolution authorizing a fiscal year 2020 application to the National Endowment for the Arts um, and authorizing the local match for the grant. Thank you, Ryan. And of course, we always have the uh, ability to accept that grant once it's, if it is successful. Right? Uh, any questions, the council for Ryan? The, the the one question I I brought up a, a, a while ago on this the downtown thing it was was in fact a plan on marketing, and I think I, I thought somebody was going to put one together, but I, I mean I still would like to see a plan on how we intend to market this. You know, we're going to build this. And then are we just gonna kind of build it and hope they come, or or are we gonna have an active, you know, marketing plan? And I th I thought the the committee was gonna look at that and and push something out, but I think I would still like to see something like that. Yeah, Your Honor, members, Councilmember Hicks, that that is a great question, and it's still actively being worked on. To be quite honest with you, um, we've been in contact with the Center for the Arts on multiple occasions. And it's certainly not going to fall on their shoulders, but they're a key partner in um, programming of the amphitheater, whether they like it or not. And uh, as a result of some of the committee's work wrapping the design of the amphitheater up, those conversations are ongoing. Um, I would say that uh, Bill and I have met with him at least three, if not four times, talking about that. And, and um we've talked to other stakeholders as well. So that, that conversation's ongoing. There's nothing that's been formally drafted or put together to bring back to the council, but it's something that we will address. Uh, I, mean, I mean, my concern is that obviously we have like movies in the park and, uh, you know, we have programs that are in place and I don't want to see something distract from something else, sure. but only to be a, an, ad, an additive thing. Yep, we'll, we'll bring something as soon as we have it. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, is there a... Someone would like to offer a resolution for this submission? I'd like to offer that. that. Second that, Grant Your Honor. application. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Tom. Further questions for Ryan? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That resolution is approved. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, item number six is a request to change the name of a street and the name of a uh, number of a house. Um, so we received this. I think we all have this letter. It's all it's on the desk, right? Yep. yep. From uh, Ed Newman of NCS Homes. And the second request is pretty straightforward. It's to change the name of the house from 209 to 207, so they're all in, in uh, line. Um, the other request is, is uh, and there is a resolution that's been drafted, but it's to change the name from uh, Amy court to Anna court and I, I'm not sure we ju I just learned this today I think we all did and um, I don't know if there's any more reasoning behind the name of the change but obviously my thought process is Amy court was named for somebody I'm not sure why we want to just go changing that name just because there's different owners on the street um, but that's my personal thought I in, unless there's a reason a compelling reason that we need to change the name of the street. It's named after somebody. So uh, that's my personal thought. Um, but I'm interested to hear what other people think. Mm -hmm. In this case, since the owner owns all the lots on the street and he's interested in changing the name, 
I don't have a problem with it. I, I think it's a coin flip, Amy or Anna, but I, I don't have any dog in the fight as far as the name goes, other than to think um, it would be it would be an indication of our willingness to work with builders and developers to do something simple like this, and for that reason, I'd support it. It's not costing us anything, I don't think, is it? The cost of the I science. <laughs> I guess my, my only concern would be setting a precedent, you know, that now that if people decide that they want the street that they live on to be a different name, you know, for instance, I do believe that Fergus used to have a Banana Avenue, and I would love to see that come back. <laughs> so There was kind of a split there. <laughs> <laughs> oh well played, sir, well played. Um, yeah, I guess that would just be my only concern is setting a precedent. Um, sure. <clears throat> All right, well, is there a resolution? Um, it would actually be a motion directing me to draft an ordinance. That's how we change street names is by ordinance. And there is an ordinance that is drafted and ready to go for a first reading. So choose. But it would start with a motion directing me to draft an yeah. If you're looking for that motion, then I'd be willing to present that motion to change the name. That'd, that'd be the only item on this motion, and then we deal with the other stuff, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd present that motion. To change the name from Amy to Anna. Okay, so there's a motion. Actually, Your Honor, just to clarify, the motion would be to direct the city attorney to draft the ordinance, and then we'll talk about the actual changing mm -hmm. of the name. Very good. Got it. So there's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it, Your Honor. All in favor of that motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. That motion carries. And now the second bit of action would be talk about the actual we need to introduce the resolution correct and does that does it i can't find my copy does it have the n name of the number house change as well that's that's more of a engineering question but just to change the street name requires an ordinance but this house numbering is an engineering well, question and so what is so the yeah thanks so the question about cost other than the street sign we, we do have a cost of publishing an ordinance of six hundred dollars is that Correct? No? Not that much for something this small. Yeah. small? Okay. Do we have any idea what it is? Likely $100 Okay. So we'll need this ordinance introduced this evening. That's all we need, right? Yep. So would someone like to introduce the ordinance? I'll introduce the ordinance. Thanks, Anthony. Okay, so that's introduced. Then the second item we can do by resolution just to direct the city staff to have the Engine, the GIS department change the name of the number of the house? Yeah, yeah, Your Honor. It's something we'll look at. We have to follow postmaster uh, requirements and everything, too. We'll look at it, but I'm sure it was set up in some manner. Got it. But I can't without looking. So you guys will look at that, so we don't have to take any action on that tonight. Yeah. That's, that's correct. That. Jim, don't we usually uh, number them with even or odds? Or are, are they on different sides of the street or, or, or it's a cul-de-sac so i i'm not entirely sure and i'm not uh address coordinator so um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll look and see what we can do that works with the local postmaster usually one side is odd one side mm -hmm. even is the way it's done so. mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right any other questions seeing none we will move along uh under presentation of claims this evening we have Claims in the amount of two million four hundred ninety thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and seventy nine cents. And if there's any questions, we'll direct those to the finance director. I have a question, Your Honor. Anthony, um, under Fergus Falls Convention, um, it says May two thousand and nineteen lodging tax penalty. I'm just wondering what's the three hundred and twenty six dollars. If Bill knows what the penalty. The lodging is. tax penalty. Yeah. That's if one of our um, providers, one of the hotels, paid their lodging tax late to the city, then we charge a penalty. Right. So, okay. and then we move those revenues between the general fund and the Visit Fergus Falls. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, is there a resolution to I'll, I'll, I'll make that, Your Honor. Thank you, Anthony. Second, Thank you, Jim. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 That resolution is approved. 
There are no board committee or department reports or reports from staff and administrative offices. There's no old business, unfinished business, or new business that I'm aware of. Uh, miscellaneous announcements. Reminder that July 29th, 5.30, here in the city council chambers will be the rental registration public meeting. Hopefully we all are able to make that. Uh, and then again, next, next <coughs> Monday, do, do we set a time? Is it 4.30? 4.30 here in the council chambers, the uh, Glacial Edge Trail Master Plan submission, or I'm sorry, the Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails submission will go into further discussion about that. Any other announcements, Jim? The siren out by the golf course was repaired today. Got it. Yeah, thank you to the uh, fire department, to the police department, to the uh, public works department. All Autotail uh, power. Autotail power. Heard nothing but good things, with the exception of the uh, one one siren that malfunctioned. But of uh, everyone's safe, the systems handled what they were supposed to. Um, and so, thank you to everyone on that. Anything else to come before the council? If not, we're adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I, you know, I just. I'll, 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 I'll,